Welcome back, compadres. Today we're talking reservoir engineering. So this is some great stuff. So I've mentioned previously that we did this radio flow interpretation. Now we can take advantage of it. We can use it to get reservoir characterization parameters such as permeability, skin, original gas in place, drainage area, recovery factor. I mean, it just covers across the board. So guys, we're doing this all with production decline data. We don't have to shut in the well. Your boss will be proud if you do it this way and you get a good interpretation. Of course, not all data will fit this interpretation. You may have some bad data or you may have a reservoir that doesn't drain a cylindrical drainage area. So just keep that in mind. Um, but you'll see as we step through this, I'm gonna go through, describe some theory, and then I'm actually gonna go in and do an Excel analysis to get those parameters and I'm going to compare it to a textbook example problem. So guys, I hope you're excited because this is going to be a great video for any reservoir guru. So guys, let's get started. The goal today is to perform reservoir characterization using the reciprocal rate radio flow interpretation. So what can we get from this graph? This is our reciprocal rate versus log of time graph. We can get permeability, drainage area, original gas in place, skin and recovery factor pretty much everything we want as a reservoir engineer so it's important to realize the assumptions that go into this interpretation number one you're assuming the reservoir drains a cylindrical drainage area and number two you're assuming the infinite acting region is producing during that time period you're producing at a constant bottom hole pressure so if you recall our infinite acting region is approximated by this straight line for radio flow. And then beyond this point right here, we approximate boundary dominated flow with ARPS equations. So before we go into the analysis and actually dig in and get our reservoir characterization parameters from this interpretation, it's important to understand where the equations come from. So what we have here is one of the most fundamental equations in petroleum engineering, the diffusivity equation. And as you can see, it's a partial differential equation. You have a time derivative and a second order spatial derivative. So essentially, you need two boundary conditions and an initial condition to solve this equation. It's not easy to do by hand, and I suggest if you're interested, open up a petroleum engineering textbook. They have this in there. They derive equations and you can walk through it yourself but it does require some mathematical labor that's outside the scope of this video but what I want you to realize is if you assume a constant bottom hole pressure and you're in the infinite acting region you can get an approximate solution of this equation right here so this is our equation for infinite acting radial flow assuming that the bottom hole pressure stays constant throughout production region. So this is the infinite acting region. So for gases, you see this term right here, we use pseudo pressure. Pseudo pressure is a term they use, and you can open a, a textbook and read why, but for gases we use pseudo pressure. So the key point from this slide I want you to understand is that you can rearrange this equation to get the equation in the form of a straight line. All you have to do is take the reciprocal of both sides and then distribute this term among these other terms and you can get it in the form of y equals mx plus b. As you see here, if you distribute this term and take the inverse, you end up with your y as the reciprocal rate, your slope as this term, your x as the log of time, and your intercept as this pur whole purple term right here. And so these terms and blue and purple are constant. And so if you plot this on a reciprocal rate versus log of time or on a semi-log plot, you will get a straight line. And that's why this interpretation comes in handy. Because from this straight line, as you see here, you can get the slope and also the intercept. The intercept on a semi-log plot occurs at a log of 1 because the log of 1 is 0. And so essentially what you can do, you can get these from your graph or your production data, your interpretation, and then you can approximate parameters such as permeability and also get skin. 
and so I want to emphasize that you probably won't find too much of this in a textbook of course in a textbook you can go see they derive solutions for constant rate production well I want you to realize that constant rate and constant volume hole pressure you arrive at similar identical solutions and so just realize that you'll find that you'll see that in the textbook but from this intercept and slope we can do lots of things and so that's why um, this interpretation is is so advantageous to you because it's derived from the fundamentals and you can get reservoir characterization parameters okay so this is a high level overview and I've kind of written all the equations out so in the infinite acting region right here you can get permeability and skin and these equations right here I'm, I'm not going to provide too much context behind the terms yet but just realize skin is a measure of stimulation or formation damage if you're not familiar with it negative skin is good positive skin is usually bad because it means you have formation damage and also I want to mention I failed to mention this but these equations are time is in days so you'll just remember that time is in days and so these two equations permeability and skin are just derived from these two equations right here it's just these equations algebraically rearranged to solve for skin this equation algebraically rearranged to solve for permeability so I encourage you to go through that exercise so that you know where this is coming from and also pseudo pressure can be approximated or is defined by this term right here and so it's a integral that requires numerical methods to solve in this case and I, I'm gonna solve it with the Gaussian quadrature so this that's just a heads up I want you guys to realize that before uh, I go into the Excel analysis so after I get permeability and skin I got two reservoir characterization parameters I need now if you want to get the radius of investigation drainage area original gas in place you got to use this time to the end of radial infinite acting flow so this value right here this time right here is important to get a radius of investigation which basically is how much what is the cylindrical radius that the reservoir is draining and this equation is derived for radius of investigation in feet and then from radius of investigation you can get drainage area it's just um, an area that's essentially it, what it is area of a circle and you can get that in acres we like to express thing in, in acres in petroleum engineering in the United States at least and then from drainage area you can get your original gas in place so a here is our drainage area and so guys there you have it from this interpretation these are the equations you're going to use to get these characterization parameters that you need in order to make decisions in, re in reservoir engineering and you can do it all from production to client data you don't have to shut in the well so these are the steps we're going to use or apply in our Excel analysis to get our reservoir characterization parameters. So I'm not going to go into detail on this. Pause the video. If you're confused about anything, please go back and watch the video. I try to go into this as detailed as I can. If I failed or had a misstep, please comment it, in it below. I really want to hear your guys' feedback, and I want to help you guys as much as I can. So let's go ahead and step into the Excel analysis. So we're using the same production data we used previously, the same interpretation. And we're actually going to use data from the textbook. This is data from the textbook. We're going to use reservoir parameters from a textbook. So if you're not familiar with this textbook, it's one of the best textbooks I've used in petroleum engineering. It's Gas Reservoir Engineering, written by Lee and Wattenberger. So if we go to page 232, we'll see an example right here 
which says to estimate permeability and skin where they actually go through an example and do it with type curves and all this stuff so we're gonna use this table which that example uses example 9.2 use these reservoir parameters and we're gonna see how close we get to their answer. So you can see here they got a permeability of 0.08 millidarcies. They got a radius of in they got a radius of investigation of basically 1100 feet, a drainage area of 85 acres and a skin of negative 1.3. So I have this data right here to the right. I'm using the exact same thing. This is our table. I put in these parameters right here. We're going to utilize that. So the first step is we can calculate skin. So in order to calculate skin, we need pseudo pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the VBA functions. So press Alt F11. So we're going to estimate permeability with the equation off there to the right. We're also going to calculate skin using that equations to the right and then we're going to use calculate radius of investigation, drainage area, original gas in place so this is our code. I'll post this in the description and then our pseudo pressure right here is as you can see it's not too bad um, but I'm using the Gaussian quadrature method to approximate pseudo pressure and so you can get these equations online from a professor at LSU. I'll leave the link in the description. The first things first is we want to calculate pseudo pressure. So the function is called pseudo pressure. And it takes reservoir temperature, pressure, specific gravity, and I'm going to freeze these and impurities which I'm going to call zero so that's pseudo pressure at initial reservoir pressure and then if I drag this down this is pseudo pressure at well flowing pressure and then I can calculate the difference to get the difference in pseudo pressure Okay, so now that we have pseudo pressure, we can go ahead and calculate permeability. So I do, if you call permeability radial, that's the function I programmed right there. And it takes the slope from our reciprocal rate radial flow graph, which was predetermined from the previous video. Reservoir temperature, net pay thickness, so you can get this from a log. Our pseudo pressures at initial reservoir pressure, pseudo pressure, at well flowing pressure, and bang. So we got a value of 0 0.096 millidarcies. If we go back to our textbook, they got 0 0.08 millidarcies. Check that out. That's pretty close. That is pretty close. So now let's go estimate skin. So this is our skin equation. And so if you look over here, we're going to need gas viscosity and total system compressibility and you can actually estimate this with correlations and so I'm gonna do that so my gas viscosity function is called U of G it takes pressure and I'm gonna use initial reservoir pressure because that's the pressure that they use in the book temperature gas gravity and impurities so bang that's our gas viscosity and if you look over here they put in a gas viscosity of if I can find it 0 0.02095 so we got 0 0.022 that's pretty close but you can use whatever correlation you want I mean that's kinda of your decision and then we'll need gas compressibility CG pressure I'm using initial reservoir pressure temperature gas gravity and impurities I'm going to use zero now total 
total system compressibility is basically just a weighted distribution or not a weighted distribution but a a, a term that uses it's a weighted equation so I can open it up here so you guys can see it so this is total consist total system compressibility it prompts for our gas oil water saturations and then our oil gas and water compressibilities and formation compressibility so it's a pretty simple equation so if you go total compressibility we don't have oil in this case so zero oil saturation zero oil compressibility specific gravity of the gas I'm sorry that's gas saturation <laughs> gas saturation gas compressibility water saturation water compressibility formation compressibility so in case you didn't know anything circled in a red outline is approximated by a correlation anything in green is what I calculated and anything right here that's blue is comes from the table over here to the right from the textbook so now that we've got those parameters we can estimate skin and so skin radial it's this equation right here prompts for our intercept I'm sorry our slope our intercept our permeability mess that up permeability porosity you can get that from a log viscosity gas viscosity we just calculated that total system compressibility we just calculated that and then our well bore radius in feet so we got a skin value of negative 0.53 so the book got let's see negative 1.3 so there are some differences but then again they're using slightly different gas viscosity and they're using a different interpretation so after we've calculated skin and permeability we can go ahead and get our radius of investigation so the VB function for that is going to be radius of investigation and it's going to take in our time produced to the end of radio flow which is over here our permeability our porosity viscosity gas viscosity and total system compressibility so bang 1066 feet what did they get 1087 feet man that's within basically 25 feet and now we can calculate our area drainage area and that's going to take in just our radius of investigation 82 acres okay so they got 85 acres close okay now to calculate original gas in place we need to calculate our gas formation volume factor and I've actually coded this as well um, it's pretty involved but just to give you a heads up I'm using the Hall and Yorbor Z factor correlation to do this and um, I will post this too but I'm calculating the formation gas volume factor in terms of feet cube per standard cubic feet or that's reservoir cubic feet per standard cubic feet so it's going to take in temperature pressure and realize temperature in this case I converted it into Rankine in our code but just realize that when you perform these calculations you usually need temperature and Rankine but I've 
I've made it convenient for us and coded it in a way that you can put temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. So pressure. So I'm going to use initial reservoir pressure. That's what you're going to need. Specific gravity and our impurities. So bang, that's our formation volume factor. Now I can calculate original gas in place. It's going to take drainage area. Net pay zone thickness. Porosity. Water saturation. And gas formation volume factor. So this is our original gas in place in 1,000 standard cubic feet. So now, previously we calculated EUR from our interpretation. So now we can calculate a recovery factor. And so a recovery factor is simply just our estimated ultimate recovery divided by our original gas in place. And we get a recovery factor of 71% right here. So bang, guys, that's it. From this interpretation, we got permeability, skin, radius investigation, original gas in place, and drainage area. Okay, we didn't have to shut in the well. So you guys probably haven't seen this before. And I will tell you, this stuff isn't in textbooks. So um, this is new. I hope you guys learned something. And um, if you like the video, please subscribe. There's more great stuff to come uh, regarding reservoir engineering, petroleum engineering, all of that jazz. And I'll see you next time. Adios.